All right, so I've made a, a big deal out of the fact that the Vickery or second price auction is a truthful auction. So let's actually see why that's true. Let me just sort of write down the, the property again at the top of the slide just for our reference. Now remember what it means to be a dominant strategy. That's a strategy which is sort of a no-brainer strategy, always in your best interest, always maximizes your payoff, doesn't matter what the other bidders are doing. Uh, so just so we're clear, let me remind you about you know, what was the payoff of a bidder in a victory auction. Uh, this is just copied from a couple slides ago. So there are really two cases in the bidder utility. So first of all, you might lose, and then you don't have to pay anything either. Uh, so their utility is going to be zero. It doesn't matter what your valuation was. You know, you don't win anything. You don't pay anything. The utility is just zero. If you do win the item, how you feel about it is going to depend on two things. So first of all, you know, how much do you want it? So how high is your valuation, V sub I? Uh, and secondly, what did you have to pay? What was the selling price, P? And we're working with sort of the simplest imaginable model, you know, although the same arguments would hold more generally. But just to keep it simple, let's assume that a bidder cares about sort of the amount of value left over after it's paid the selling price. So it's maximum willingness to pay V sub I minus whatever the selling price P is uh, that it had to pay. So this is the expression we're going to assume that bidders want to maximize. So when we talk about truthful bidding being a dominant strategy, what we mean is that it maximizes this utility no matter what the other bidders do. Now, the proof of this is, is quite short, and it's, you know, it's going to fit easily on this slide. Uh, but before we do that, maybe I can also just give you kind of an intuitive argument about why it does seem like the Vickery auction should be truthful. Intuition, which is maybe going to be easier to remember uh, down the line. So basically what's going on is in a Vickery auction, you're delegating sort of your bidding to the auctioneer, to a third party. And the third party is promising to bid optimally on your behalf. To see what I mean, imagine we weren't doing a second price auction. Imagine we were doing a first price auction where you had to pay your bid. So how should you bid in a first price auction? Well, you'd love it if you had sort of, you know, x-ray vision or clairvoyance, and you simply knew what all your competitors were going to bid. If you knew what all their bids were, and say you knew that the highest bid was going to be $20, you could say, well, you know, if my valuation is less than $20, you know, forget it, I'll just let them have it. If my valuation is more than $20, now remember, in a first price auction, I have to pay my bid. Okay, so higher bids means higher prices. So if I have a valuation higher than $20, my optimal bid is to just beat $20, just beat the highest bid by somebody else. That maximizes utility because I win, and subject to winning, I get it at the uh, cheapest possible price given the competitor's bids. Now, of course, in a first price auction, you do not know that $20. You do not know what your competitors are doing. You have to guess when you place your bid. But in a second price auction or any sealed bid auction, there is someone who does know what all the bids are, which is the auctioneer, which is the third party. So in a second price auction, the auctioneer is promising you, look, you know, if you, if you happen to be the highest bidder, you know, I promise I will charge you as if you bid the minimum amount necessary to beat out all the competition. So I'm going to be as nice to you as possible, you know, subject to you still, you know, winning, subject to you beating out all the competition. So that seems like a pretty good bargain, right? So, you know, you don't know what other people are doing. The auctioneer does know what other people are doing. You sort of delegate your bidding responsibility to them and they promise to do it optimally on your behalf. So that sounds like a pretty good idea. So that's the intuition. Now let's actually give kind of the two line mathematical argument uh, for why the Vickery auction is in fact a truthful auction. All right, so we need to show that a truthful bid is always the best idea, no matter what. So pick your favorite bidder, you know, like bidder number seven. Uh, they have some valuation. We're not going to care what it is. You know, they have a valuation, you know, maybe it's 83 or whatever. Uh, and then the other bidders bid whatever they bid. You know, maybe they bid truthfully, maybe they didn't, but whatever. The other bidders bid whatever they did. You know, 42 over here, 68 over here, 17 over here, and so on. So fix all of those numbers. The bidder we're talking about, the valuation of that bidder, and then what the competition did. The argument is going to have uh, two cases, both very short, and which case we're in will, de will depend on the competition. So it'll depend on whether the highest bid by somebody else is more or less than bidder I's valuation. So a little notation, let's use capital B to denote the highest bid by somebody else.
The next thing to notice is that while, you know, there's an infinite number of different things that, uh, you know, bidder I could bid, really there's only two different outcomes that are going to ensue, right? So either bidder I bids, you know, so maybe, you know, maybe capital B is 68. Uh, either bidder I can bid something less than 68, that'll result in it losing and getting utility zero, or bidder I can bid more than 68. And it doesn't matter what it bids, uh, more than 68, any bid bigger than 68 will trigger the same outcome. It'll trigger bidder I being the winner, and it will also trigger the selling price to be 68, the highest bid by somebody else, which is exactly this capital B. Those are the two possible outcomes that bidder I uh, can cause to happen. So now let's look at the two cases, depending on whether bidder I's valuation is above capital B or below it. And let's just check that in each of the two cases, uh, the better outcome for the bidder is the one that transpires uh, from a truthful bid. First, suppose that uh, bidder I's valuation, its maximum length to pay, is at most the highest bid capital B by somebody else. Well, then if we look at the two outcomes that could transpire, right, uh, one of them, and one of them uh, I loses and gets utility zero, uh, and the other one I wins and gets utility VI minus capital B, and in this case, because capital B is at least as big as V sub I, uh, that second case is even worse. Okay, so that second case, you're generally going to have negative utility. So neither of these options are so attractive for the bidder, but if it had to pick between option one, losing in utility zero versus winning and getting negative utility, it's going to pick the first one. It wants to lose, given that the highest bid by somebody else is bigger than its valuation. And guess what? If it bids truthfully, that's what happens. You know, its value is less than the highest other bid. So if it bids truthfully, its bid will be less than the highest other bid. It's not going to be the winner and it will in fact get utility zero, which again, in case one is the best case scenario for this bidder. Let's look at the other case where the bidder's valuation is at least as big as the highest other bid, at least as big as capital B. So in this case, once again, there's, there's just two different outcomes that bidder I could possibly, you know, find itself in. Um, either in the first case where it loses uh, and has, as usual, utility zero, or the second case where it wins. And this time its utility in the second case is going to be uh, at least zero, generally bigger than zero, uh, because its valuation is bigger than the highest other bid. So in this case, the bidder actually prefers the second case over the first one. It prefers to win rather than lose, given that its valuation is bigger than the price it's going to have to pay. Moreover, if the bidder bids truthfully, that's exactly what's going to happen. Okay, if it sets its bid equal to its value, because its value is bigger than all the other bids, its bid is going to be equal to all the other bids, that'll result in it winning, and indeed being in the second case and getting the utility of VI minus capital B. I should say I'm being a little sloppy about the edge case where the valuation is exactly equal to capital B, and that's because nothing really matters at that point, right? So that means basically either um, bidder is going to lose or it's going to win but pay a price that exactly cancels out its value so it has utility zero either way at that point the bidder literally doesn't care whether it wins or loses the auction so the interesting case is where vi is strictly more or strictly less um, than the highest other bid in which case it strictly prefers the outcome it gets from truthful bidding compared to the other possible outcome and so that's the entire argument. That is why formally the Vickery auction is a truthful auction. Why bidding truthfully is always a dominant strategy. You don't care, you need to care about how many other bidders there are. You don't need to care what their valuations are. You don't need to care if they're truthful or not. It does not matter. You should always bid truthfully in a second price or Vickery auction. Always is the, is the course of action that will give you the max possible utility. So that's definitely the most important thing to know about uh, a Vickery auction, this truthfulness property. Uh, while we're sort of talking about properties of Vickery auctions, I do want to sort of mention one other, you know, so, sort of obvious but still important property that they have, um, which is that the item goes to the person who wants it the most. By wants it the most, I mean the bidder with the highest valuation. Uh, okay, technically when I say that, I'm assuming that bidders are bidding truthfully, that the bids are equal to the valuations. Uh, that's, a, you know, given that truthful bidding is a dominant strategy, that's not that strong an assumption. And if all of the bidders bid truthfully, if they all bid their true valuations, because the Vickery auction uh, awards the item to the highest bidder with truthful bids, that's going to be the same as the bidder with the highest valuation. So that's a very nice property. Whoever wanted it the most is the one who winds up with the item um, in the Vickery auction. One way you can think about this is, you know, in effect, you know, what we wanted to do is take the maximum of bidder's valuations. We wanted to identify which bidder had the maximum valuation, sort of the, you know, the rightful winner of the auction. 
And if we had, you know, telepathy and we just sort of knew everybody's valuations, we could dispense with the auction, walk up to the person with the highest value. And if we didn't care about revenue, we could just hand the item over uh, to the bidder with the, with the highest valuation. So what's remarkable about the Vickery auction is we actually get exactly the same end result as if we had telepathy and new people's valuations, even though we didn't, okay? even though we knew nothing about bidders' valuations before. After the auction has been run, it's as if we knew them all along and identified the bidder who was the worthy victor uh, in the auction for this item. That completes what I wanted to tell you about single item auctions and specifically about second price or Vickery auctions. So what I want to do in the second half of this module is build on single item auctions to tell you about uh, how auctions really work in online advertising. Specifically, we'll learn about um, the auction format that Google uses for sponsored search auctions, something known as a generalized second price auction. So we'll pick that up starting uh, with the next video. I'll see you there.